Oh. One November evening last year, Mrs. Bowles and a friend of the family, Mr. Pratt, were driving out of Winchester when they saw a light in the sky, a light seen by many other people that night. This is where we see the large orange light. Mm, that's right, yes, we do. Yes, on their left. On the left here. Yes. And then... then it disappeared, and I am coming up to it now. It appeared again here. But right. it started harboring down below the back of these trees and the hedges here. So we came on down the road for another quarter of a mile, maybe a bit more. We turned sharp left to come into Chilcombe Lane. It's a bad bend, isn't it? Going down this lane, and uh, we, see we, we were doing about 20 mile an hour, maybe 20, 25 mile an hour. Done about 70 yards down, all of a sudden this car suddenly went crazy. It just leapt off the road to the right, and the engine started to rev. We hit the grass verge, which is a very wide grass verge, about 15 yards wide. And we were heading towards a high edge. So I grabbed the steering wheel as Mrs. Bowles was fighting with it. And suddenly the car straightened itself. We came down the grass verge for about 10 to 15 yards. And we came to a stop. And it was though we hit an invisible barrier, which did it, it gave because it didn't throw me forward into the seat, but it gave and then brought us back to our normal stopping position. That was when we see... Well, then the... Sorry, yes. That was when we see what I shall say, a cigar-shaped object hovering in front of us. Inside were three figures. Yes, they had like a cockpit in the, the, the cabin was in the, the front of the cigar-shaped thing. Uh, and was uh, lit up, but um, not glowingly lit up. It was a very easy light to look at. It was hovering. It had either steam or vapour coming out like, like gas jets. Then I see one of these figures get out of this thing, this yes. object, and yes. it started walking across towards me. Yes, it was. Now, as it was walking across towards me, I heard a whistle. Which and I didn't so hear. It's like a... A whistling kettle starting to whistle. Now he had on like a boiler suit, but it was with a polar neck collar. He had a seam down on his right hand side. As he walked across, he came to my window. He put his arm on the roof of my car and looked in. Now he was a tall man, roughly six foot one, six foot two. He had pink eyes, which were very piercing. He had sideboards and a beard which met. He looked in at me, then he looked at Ted. After looking at Ted, he looked at my dashboard. And as he was looking at the dashboard, my car engine started up. Now the car ignition keys was turned off. And as the engine started up of my car, my lights were my headlights were four times powerful than what they normally are. Which was it was just like a glow of white. I see a movement of this figure. Oh, by the way, I grabbed Ted. And I said, no, Ted, don't get out, don't get out, because he wanted to get out. And I just literally wrapped my body around Ted. And then I opened one eye, because I'd had my eyes shut. And I opened one eye, and I said, look out, Ted, he's going round the back to you. I see a movement, thinking he was going round the right, all the way round my car. Ted looked over his left hand and shoulder, to have a look around to see if he was coming round. And my words were, don't open the door, Ted, don't open the door. But while Ted was looking round and me huddled to him with my eyes closed, the figure disappeared with the object. After starting, after it gone, after a few seconds, which seemed hours to us, I started, Ted said, well, let's go. Oh, he asked me if he could drive. And I said, not likely. It only meant because it meant me getting out of my car. I put it in first and started off, but we could not move. It was as though as we were still hitting an invisible barrier. Well, I put her back in neutral and waited for a few seconds, and then I started off again. And we went off perfectly normal in the car. On the Monday, when I got up, I had a rash on my face, down my neck, and on, along onto my shoulder. Which side? On the right-hand side, it was all like blotchy. 
It could have been a nerve, nerve rash or it could have been where that gentleman was stood by my window. Incidentally, since this happening, I have had a telephone call from a person from London telling me on no account am I to say anything to anyone about this, what we've seen, because I should be having a government official come round to see me. And after all, this is England and this is a free country and I will speak and say what I want, which is the truth. Certainly about 15 years ago, uh, I, like most people, thought that this must be from outer space. But uh, I've long ago ceased to think that it is necessarily the only possible exception, uh, explanation. I think that there can probably, uh, very likely, be other realities. Where? Here. Around us, now? Yes. yes. On a different, different time scale, you mean? Time, space, framework, anything. Other dimensions, you would like. We don't have a vocabulary for it, so it really isn't worth talking about it. Surrounding us, now, in this room? Yes. I might be sticking my finger through many worlds when I do this. Eastern religions have always said that this is so. So that um, I do not think that we see the whole of reality. I think we have a very limited view of reality. And this is the big problem for man, really, in exploring this thing and following up to know where they come from. Now, I wanted to show you some of these uh, early terms which interest me. Now, let's take a, 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 an early language like Sanskrit. Mm. Now, you find in the classical writings of India, in Sanskrit, in the Mahabharata and the, and the Ramayana, you'll find references to a machine or a vehicle described as a vimana. Mm. There it is in Sanskrit, vimana. Mm. And you see what it's called? It's called a celestial chariot of the gods or an aerial car. But now you take modern modern Hindi language, which is the descendant of Sanskrit. This isn't actually uh, English Hindi, so I haven't got any English, this is Russian Hindi. And I look up samolyot in Russian, which is the word for an aeroplane, and what do I find? Vimana. Mm. So there it is. Mm. Now, here I have the New English Bible. Mm. And again, there are very interesting words which occur in Hebrew. Um, there is, first of all, Ezekiel's famous experience, because Ezekiel saw something, and he was afterwards taken aloft. It's described as galgal, a wheel, mm. and, of course, you have... One objection to this that I've read is that Ezekiel saw a vision and not a thing. Well, I can only tell you that uh, a man in America, I forget his name at the moment, but he is a space scientist, has just written a very convincing book about it. And he fully, it's out in paperback in this country. And uh, is it Blumrich? I think his name is Blumrich. He fully accepts the thesis that this is an attempt by a member of a non-technological society to describe what we would call some kind of machine. A Yugoslav artist has illustrated this theme of celestial chariots interpreting biblical events in a new light. These pictures, in this case Jacob's Ladder, were used in a book by a member of the House of Lords who spent many years studying and writing about possible explanations of UFO phenomena, the Earl of Clancarty. Well, then, of course, you see this one here is of Moses uh, coming down in a UFO on Mount Sinai. Mm. And incidentally, in the Bible, uh, the Lord, as they were preferred to, that, the particular God in that spacecraft, he warned uh, Moses to keep the people away. Now this, uh, this is interesting because there have been many, many uh, cases of uh, UFOs in modern times coming down uh, and, and some people have got burnt from radiation and from getting too near to the craft. And this was obviously a, a particularly powerful one that came down on Mount Sinai.